Right, fuckers, welcome back to the Old Farm Revival on Football Manners 2017. It is the end of the second season, 2017-2018 season, and it is now time for the season review. So we'll start with Celtic, and to, uh, to nobody's surprise, really, we did go ahead and we did win. If I can get it up. <laughs> we did win the uh, Scottish Premier League, so we got 38 games played. 27 wins, 9 draws, and only 2 defeats, 90 points, so comfortably winning the league from our nearest rivals, Aberdeen, uh, by 21 points, I just kind of gave away the Rangers finish here, but, <laughs> so the exact same position as last year for Rangers, finishing the top 3, but it's exactly the same, albeit last season Partick, fin Partick Fissel finished 4th, but this season... Uh, top 3, exact same as last season, albeit this time around Celtic got quite a bigger gap. In the other competitions, um, we won the Scottish Cup with Celtic. We beat, um, who was who did we beat? Let's have a quick check. We beat Partick Thistle in the final in extra time, so it was great to lift the Scottish Cup. Betfred Cup, we got knocked out in the quarterfinals by Partick Thistle. Yeah, the Champions League we finished third in a group in a group with um whose group were we in again? I can't um, Arsenal and Arsenal Let's have a quick look, see who whose group we were in. Arsenal Monaco and Florentina, so we did alright, I mean Two draws against Florentina, one one of those draws turned into a win and we would have uh, got through to the last 16. But you see, um, Scott Sinclair had the second most goals with 10, um, most assists with 7 and the most player of the matches. So Scott Sinclair was absolutely amazing in this competition. When we got knocked out, we went into the Europa League and we were pretty damn awesome in this one. So... You can see first round knockout. We drew against. Uh, we got. We were drawn against Club Bruges. We beat them four 0 on aggregate two 0 in each leg. We was on to the second round knockout. We came out against Victoria Plaza, albeit maybe a favourable draw. We came out again four one winners on aggregate in that one. This is when I think things got really impressive. Quarter finals. We came up against Manchester City and we came out. 4-2 winners on aggregate, which meant we advanced to the semi-finals, and that is unfortunately where our run came to an end. So after a nice 3-1 victory at first, in the first leg, we couldn't convert it as Chelsea did defeat Ed beat, beat us 4-0 in the second leg at Stamford Bridge. So, But all in all, to get to the... Um, I think to get to the semi-final was an amazing effort, and I'm very happy with that. And then in the final, Chelsea, after beating us, went on to lose to Olympia, Olympic Lyon. So, there you go, that's how the Europa League went. The Champions League, the uh, final was played between Juventus and Real Madrid, and Real Madrid won it again. So, they've won it three out of the last five years. Uh, Real Madrid really strong in that competition. Bear with me, I'm trying to fucking find something here and I can't seem to do it. Uh, where the hell are we? Uh, where the hell are we? Um, that's not what we want. We want player stats. Where the fuck is it? As they go. This season, Moussa Dembele, top goal scorer, 36 goals, absolutely amazing, I mean, 36 goals, no one's came near him. Scott Sinclair with the highest average rating, 7.6, Scott Sinclair with 23 assists, Callum Patterson with 90% uh, pass completion, Scott Sinclair, most man in the match awards with 22, 22, that's staggering man, that is staggering, and no surprise to see Scott Brown pick up the most red and yellow cards. In terms of finances, uh, we've done okay. The over overall balance now is 28 million. Uh, we've got some money coming in. We've done alright. I mean, nobody really cares about the uh, 
it's not a big deal to look at, but we did alright in terms of that. Um, Scottish Premier League, let's have a look at the awards. Football player, the Scott Sinclair won player of the year and Musa Dembele coming in the second, so both of them snatching up the awards. Goal of the month, oh, not goal of the month. Goal of the season was won by Kenny McLean, although Cal McGregor did come in forward with his goal. Player of the year was Scott Sinclair. Musa Dembele won it last year, Scott Sinclair won it this year, it's been five years in a row that. Celtic player won it, so we're dominating in that area. Team of the Year featured five Celtic players, Joe Robles and Nets. Loose Tig as the centre-back, Keon Tierney as the left-back, Scott Sinclair as the left-mid, and Moussa Dembele up front. You can also see two Rangers players in there, Wes Moult and James Tavernier. Average rate in all you can see Scott Sinclair obviously there, as we were talking about the highest player. Top goal scorer was Musa Dembele, obviously in the league. 22 goals. Second was Faghorn, and well, joint second was Faghorn and Lewis Moult. Writers' Young Player of the Year was Musa Dembele, Young Player of the Month. That month was uh, Brown. And young Player of the Year here was again Musa Dembele, really picking up all the awards and eating those awards for fun. So um, we've got, obviously all these guys are going back to loan. Um, we currently have an offer on Joe Robles from Newcastle. It was 2.9 and it's in his contract that we have to accept it. I've really enjoyed having Joe Robles at the club. I'm hoping that he decides to stay around. don't want him to leave, but, you know, it is what it is. He might decide to go. But, yeah, we'll check out Rangers now and see how they've been getting on. So obviously, as you know, in the league, finished third, same as last season, um, the gap to Aberdeen is roughly about the same, a bit more comfortable this time around, but still not where they want to be, Lewis Moult was top goal scorer, 24 goals in all competitions, James Tavernier, highest rated player, 7.16, Louis Moult with the most assists, very good season for him, Jordan Rosser, best pass completion, Tavernier got the most man in the matches, 6, I mean, compared to that, Scott Sinclair's 22, like, staggering difference. Lee Wallace, most yellows, and Jordan Ross are and Danny Wilson both got a red between them. Um, Rangers competitions, Europa League, as we know, showed you last time out, we got knocked out in the Europa League, we came third. Scottish Cup, we were knocked out in the quarterfinals by Celtic, which is unfortunate, and in the Betfred Cup, we were knocked out in the semi-finals by Partick Thistle, which, you know, it wasn't good, but Fuck it, it happened. There's not a lot we can do about it. Uh, the overall balance here for Rangers, 5.6 million. The finances looking alright. Maybe we'll have a bit more money to spend next season. I'm hoping that'll be the case anyway. And, um, yeah, I don't quite know if there's anything else left to check. Some transfers that were looking to bring in David Myler, John McGinn, Adam Hegesey. Well, we also had Kenny Miller retire, Clint Hill retired, and Emmanuel Ibu retired. So there's three key players uh, retiring for us, unfortunately. Not a lot we can do about that. But um, I suppose it will lessen the wage budget and we can look to improve on that for next season. So uh, we're going to have Celtic in the Champions League again, Rangers once again in Europa League. I think Aberdeen may get into the... I don't know, can we check with the coefficient? I think Alberti might be getting into Champions League, but we'll double check that. Well, it's not in yet, but look at that. We're set to jump way up, so I think we're going to be about, what, 12th for next season? War winners, Lionel Messi's won that. Who's the highest transfer? Well, we won't actually know yet. We're still in 
It wasn't January, it was Jero Real the Wild from Ajax to Real Madrid. So some players switching around. Look at Dimitri Payet didn't stay long in France, did he? He left Marseille to join Chelsea. And uh yeah, some big signings coming in there. But I think in terms of stats and shit, that's basically all I've got to show really. I mean can't think of anything else. You can see this season's biggest overachievers were Dundee United and the biggest underachievers were Dundee finishing 10th. Best match in the whole season was apparently Hibs taking on Dundee so look at that Ryan Edwards 14 goals part of Thistle that's not bad at all. Okay so it's now time for the 2018-2019 season expectations. The one is to win the cup, one is to win the league, and for the European Champions Cup, what should we pick? I think we'll just pick re reach the group stage and uh, try and play it safe. Rangers expectations. Uh, I think we'll just leave what's here. It's be stupid, I think, to change it. I mean. Don't want to just put pressure on ourselves. Shocking news, man. Who could have believed that England have won the fucking World Cup, man? No way. Could only happen in a game, like, only in Football Manager. How the fuck did they beat... How the fuck did they beat Denmark, man? How did Denmark even make the final? Ah, Jesus, goals from Welbeck and Dele Alley. Oh, look at that. Dele Alley wins it in the last game second of the game, fuck. How lucky is that? So who, is it, who put who out in the semi-finals? Denmark beat Argentina on penalties. England beat Italy in the quarters. Argentina beat Uruguay. England beat Senegal. Denmark beat Mexico in the second round. Senegal beat Germany. England knocked out Wales. So Wales done pretty well. What about the group stage? Did Scotland qualify? What about the other British teams? Where was Northern Ireland? Come on, Wales topped the group with Brazil on it. Very good. It appears Scotland didn't qualify, man. That sucks. So, looks like Scotland didn't qualify. No, Scotland, I missed it by a point. Unlucky there. Well, they're getting the top goals for that competition. Oh, very unlucky. Alright, anyway, guys, let's go into the. Before we start the new season, we have to go into the. Where the fuck is it? Transfer window, so it's been a lot of teams been busy. First, we'll start off with um, Celtic. I see a bunch of players that we've let go out in a free transfer. Craig Gordon has retired. Colo Turi went on a free to Nantes. We've loaned out Jamie McCart. Joe Robles joint Bur Bournemouth for 2.8 million. Callum McGregor joint QPR for 1.3, and some other loan signings. But big news look at this we brought in the legendary. Pepe man, the fucking Portuguese uh, fucking destroyer this guy, will, you better not fucking steal his Kit Kats or he'll, he'll bark on you man <laughs> this uh, criminal should be in jail, serving a life sentence for, I don't know murder or some, uh, some of the things he's done on the pitch, absolutely unbelievable but we managed to sign him coming to the end of his career, we've got him on a player coach deal which is great 675k we also signed Quintero, Quintero, Colombian centre attack midfielder from Porto on the cheap. We've got Robert Snodgrass from West Ham, 3.4 million. Um, Patrick Roberts' loan deal is finished, so I'm hoping he'll come in and do a good job on the right for us. And we've got Alphonse Areola coming in from Paris Saint Germain to replace the uh, leaving Joe Robles and this guy looks like a complete beast, 25 year old 
stats are all great, man. He'll be coming into the first team, no problem. So I'll quickly get Pepe's stats. Still, yeah, it's still a very good player, man. Lots of greens and all that shit, so. Very good there. Obviously, he's not at completely at his best, but he should still be at a good standard. Aberdeen have brought in some players. Will they be able to challenge the title? I don't know. But they'll still be looking to finish second, you think? We got a heart spending the money. We got 525k on Craig Kelty from Kilmarnock. So heart splashing the cash. Also bringing in some other players. Jordan McGee going it on loan. Bernie bringing some players on loan. Selling John McGinn. The Rangers. And that's we mentioned Rangers. Let's check them out. And Rangers here, we brought in three players, Ahmed Hegesy, centre defensive, centre back, 300k, David Miller from Hull, coming in as a CDM, 235k, bit of experience, good player, and John McGinn, 825k from Hibs, another centre defensive midfielder, due to losing Heinemann, and Ashley Mattel Niels, we had to bring in some players, and we've managed to do that. Uh, Clint Hill, Miller and Debuy all retired unfortunately and there's a few players here that have left. Mark Crooks and Jack Alwork have left on transfer. Everyone else is on loan. Alright guys, so this season is probably going to be the most important season we've had. Yes, I still expect Celtic to win the league but second place this time around will be qualifying for the Champions League which is huge. So Aberdeen have beat Rangers to it the last two seasons. Will they do it this season when it really, really does matter? The difference between finishing second and third this season is huge. So that's going to do it, guys, for this episode. Um, there may be still some transfers maybe made before the start of the season, but if there is any, you'll find them out in January, and we'll see how the teams are looking, and we'll see how all Scotland's teams go on in Europe. We've been represented by Celtic, Aberdeen, Rangers, and Hearts probably our four strongest teams representing us so I think there's a fairly good chance that we'll get some good results guys anyway thanks for watching and until next time Peace Scotland 90 peace